Hello, this is Angela Anderson. Thanks for joining me for this acrylic painting tutorial. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to paint a floral, uh, well, what are we calling this? <laughs> Some flowers. flowers on a chair. <laughs> this is the third in the series of the uh, chair flowers. I've got my husband, Mark, with me. Hey there, everybody. He's man in chat today. So if you've got questions while I'm painting, you can ask those and I'll try to answer. Let's get started. Alrighty, if you're new to our format, we are uh, doing these live, so it's kind of informal. I do these kind of like as if uh, I would do them if you were sitting down and uh, in a class with me. So, right, right. Um, Mark and I kind of just chat and I teach as I go along, so. Yeah, and in her classes as she teaches, I sit in the corner and just make odd comments at people. <laughs> it's exactly so the it's same. the same. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> Tonight we're going to be starting out with a 9 by 12 inch canvas. This is the mixed media canvas board from Fredericks. I'm um, really liking these. These are actually kind of a new product for them and um, they're good for watercolor too, but um, they've got a really smooth surface so it makes um, painting on them really nice. I've coated it with um, burnt umber. All I did is just kind of squirt a little bit on the middle here, sprayed the whole canvas with water, and then just wiped it with paper towel, kind of a damp paper towel so that it didn't soak up all the moisture out of it. But um, you can see that I kind of did it this vertical. <clears throat> Since we're gonna do a wood tone in the background, it'll kind of give it that striped look. Um, so that's all I did for that background to get it ready to go. Um, let's see, I've got a few brushes that we'll be using. I've got a, a couple of the Velvet Touches. These are the blenders, the quarter inch, three eighths inch. And then I've got my Aspen Series brushes. These will be the heavier textured brushes. I think they'll work well for this. We're gonna keep the uh, style kind of loose um, and impressionistic. So I've got uh, two round and several different brights. Uh, let's see, four, eight, and 12, I think, right? Yeah and a couple of filberts, so two and four filbert, and a long flat, this is the four flat. So I'll mention those when I use them though. I may not use them. I haven't painted this ahead of time, so uh, I never really know exactly what brushes I'm gonna use. Um, I might also use the number, the two inch Aspen Mottler. I'm not 100% sure I'm gonna use that yet though, so I bet I've got it just in case. And some chalk for drawing and a palette knife for to do some mixing. Let's go over our colors. Got a pretty limited palette today, actually. Um, I'm gonna show you how to mix. This is a uh, part of our. I think I think I titled this as a beginner series, but we've been doing a beginner series all this year, and um, I think this one's going to be fairly easy. So I would definitely lump it in with that series. It. Um, <clears throat> we haven't gone over kind of doing metal, so this will be kind of the metal lesson. Um, if <laughs> and some of this lace work too. I'm gonna, but I'm gonna keep it very simple. I'm not gonna do it too detailed tonight. So fingers crossed that's true because I always tend to go overboard. But Mark's gonna keep me to two hours, so exactly. We'll just uh, we'll just do what as much as we can do in two hours. <laughs> All right, since he's been up since 4 a.m., I'll take have mercy on him. <laughs> so I've got burnt umber, uh, yellow oxide, cadmium yellow light, uh, quinacridone magenta, ultramarine blue, unbleached titanium, titanium white, and zinc white. Zinc white's just a transparent titanium white. If you don't have it, you can just use some glazing medium or some water with your white and get a similar effect. This is some glazing medium. This is a gloss glazing liquid from Golden. And then I've put some more white over here because I knew I was gonna need to mix up some pink. So I'm gonna start out with that and I'm going to go ahead and mix up my pink. Oh, my dog's in the studio tonight. Spencer's working on his finals for college. Spencer, I'm trying to convince my tax person that dog watching during the videos is, is actually a write off. I don't know. I, I'm not sure. Yeah, exactly. It's a job. <laughs> yeah, Spencer is our 19 year old son that's in college and staying living at home because of COVID. He was planning on being on campus, but uh, didn't quite work out last year. Maybe, maybe this next year we'll see, but he's been helping us by watching the dog during the videos. <laughs> we had a new puppy come. And it wasn't an accident. 
No. He was purposely brought into the fold. <laughs> Much to Mark's, uh, what? Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That he's that excited about it. All right. Uh, that, I think that will work. I'm going to go with that. That's a very, very little bit of titanium white. So you saw, or um, of quinacridone magenta, you saw how much white was there. And I just used the tiniest little scoop of the uh, magenta. It's very, very potent. It's got a really high tinting strength. So it will um, tint really well. And we'll probably add more. I know we will add more of the magenta to it, this, as we work. But... That'll give us a good head start. And then I'm going to go ahead and mix up a pretty good amount of a black gray here. So I'm going to get my burnt umber. Um, about half of that thing there. And then kind of an equal part of the ultramarine blue. This is my favorite gray. And we're going to just mix it up. And by pre-mixing these, it'll just give us a head start. I, I usually like um, <clears throat> like to do this ahead of time and mix up a little bit more than I think I need. And make sure that when you do mix it, then you scoop it up like this and just kind of try to deposit it in as a small an area as possible. Because if you have it spread out like this, it will just dry really, really fast. So I think that's gonna work. And then I want to mix some, like a violet. So I'm gonna take some quinacridone magenta and some of that ultramine blue and mix those two together. They're gonna to make a really beautiful purple. And there's actually quite a bit of this purple in the background. So we're gonna use that and in that mug too, surprisingly. So wouldn't really expect a purple for a metal mug, but it's kind of in there. It might be the filter they used on the camera, but we're going to go with it. All right, so I'm going to grab that large brush. This is a 12 bright, and we're just going to jump right in. I'm going to get some of my unbleached titanium here and get a little bit of water on my brush. I've got that. These brushes are kind of a synthetic hog bristle, so they kind of mimic real hog bristles. If you're using a real hog bristle brush, would not add water to it because it gets makes it real soggy and they kind of flop around. They don't um, work real well. So I'm going to get some of that purple and some of this gray and just kind of lightly blend it through. And now I'm going to go up and down in this background area. If it looks too purple to you, just add more of the gray or whatever. We're just going to kind of have all these colors happening and you can see how I haven't pre-mixed them so I'm getting a varied amount of each color kind of showing up in this background area. I think I will go ahead and switch to this brush because I don't like that I'm getting these little stripes here. So we'll see how this one works. All right, so there we go. That's all you want to do. Just like a few, you should be able to see kind of all the colors on there if you did it um, the way we want here. And we're just going to go up and down for this wood grain that's in the very back here. There we go. And and you didn't wood grain on Saturday. Yeah, we did do it on Saturday. Yeah, we With did a boots. lot of wood rain. We got a lot of positive feedback on the uh, on the cowboy boots and hat. Yeah, that was a fun one. I really enjoyed that video. I like doing the still lives. I, I've been kind of into that lately. I don't know. Are you into me? I am into you still. So am I still that life? That hasn't changed. I can be a still life at times, for sure. <laughs> Me too. I'm a good couch potato. I'm the best. I win at couch potatoing. Ooh, ooh, challenge accepted. <laughs> Pretty much all summer, all winter, I should say, all the winter break. We got a question regarding hanging these kind of canvas boards. Okay. What do you suggest? Um, I suggest getting a frame. I um, They have those open back frames. They're pretty cheap at Hobby Lobby, Michael's, you know, all the kind of... Um, art supply stores, uh, 
Blick sells them online. You know, there's several different places you can get them. I'm sure Amazon probably has them too. I haven't bought any from them, but um, see how this is skipping around? That's what I want. So just wanting, and there's really not any slats that I'm seeing. So we're not having any like obvious boards, just kind of wood texture back here. Um, so yeah, do that. And then I get a, I have a gun that actually shoots the little, um, the little, uh, well, what are they? Little, they're little metal tabs kind of thing that hold the, the canvas into the frame, but you can take it into like Hobby Lobby and for like, I don't know, two or three dollars, it's not very much, they will frame it for you. So, and they'll put a really nice hanger on the back and all that. And um, if they do it, they also give you a discount on it. So um, even if it's not on sale, they discount, they always have their frames on sale on discount um, that way if you use their service. So anyhow, I did not know that at first, but one of the ladies told me that. And so ooh. from now on, yeah, after that, I was like, ooh. So the guy answer is just get a nail gun and just nail it to the wall. There you go. <laughs> that, that could work. <laughs> Six or seven nails should do, do fine. <clears throat> All right. I got this kind of blendy more than I wanted because this brush is so soft. So I'm going to hold it kind of at an angle here and just kind of very lightly drag it across here. There we go. Just to get some more of this lighter texture. And this is the lighter color, so... I still have some of that darker color showing through, but now I want a little bit, just like three different um, layers of, of contrast. So kind of a light, medium, and a dark. Um, and it really honestly does not matter. You could use any colors that you wanted to back here. If you wanted to do a color, that'd be totally fine. Um, I have a lot of wood grain tutorials, so a lot of different ways of doing it. A lot of different color choices. But I think this is pretty, and it's got just a touch of mauve, that mauve-y um, purple color in there. Not enough to like be like, oh, that's a purple background, but just, just a little bit of it in there. And I think that that's probably pretty good. So I'm going to let you take that, honey, I guess. I'm going to probably need it dry completely before I can move on. Sorry, I didn't, I didn't warn you ahead of time. <laughs> All right, I'm not gonna, since I'm using such a large brush here, I'm, I don't like to mm, dirty up my paint water with it right at first. So I'll first I'll like just dip it in here and wipe it off on my paper towel. And then once it's mostly clean, then I can go in and, and I've got a, like a little metal thing down there that I'm brushing it against to get it out. And then I'm just gonna set it out off to the side full of water here and make sure that I use, I, I don't let it dry out before I clean it. So I'm gonna just clean it with soap and water. Even if the brush seems clean on here, it's def it, the paint gets up in here and if you let it dry in there, it will ruin your brush. That's if you've got any brushes that are kind of fuzz, fuzzed out like that, um, that's what happened. The paint got up in there and they dried. So, oh, all right. Do, 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 do. My nails matched today. Waiting for Mark. If you are new to the channel, I'll just mention that I will be doing the traceable for tonight's uh, project. Uh, probably tonight, actually. I didn't get it done ahead of time, but I have those available on Patreon. So that's patreon.com slash Angela Fine Art. Um, and we are fourth year doing this so there's hundreds and hundreds of traceables available there and they're two dollars for like a flat fee of two dollars for unlimited access to all of the traceable library so it's a pretty good deal they do bill on the um, the day you sign up and then again on the first of the month so you might wait till may may 1st to get a full month but um there we go all right there we go so let's get my chalk here. And so the chair is down fairly low on this canvas. It is, let's see, somewhere in here. So we've got a, kind of an angle coming off this way, somewhere like that. And then 
right about, oh, not even up to the third. So if I find my third here, um, it's just below that. So like right in here somewhere is going to be the chair. And this should be somewhat of a right angle, this and this, right? So something like that. And then straight up from there. And that's about right, because we want this line to be right on the third. So I think we caught this one just about at the right spot. And then go up to, I don't know, right in there somewhere. Um, this is probably twice what this is. So and you can do your curve line out. And it should just start to kind of curve out this way toward the edge okay then there's a little line here and it, this kind of follows that line somewhere in there and oops then yeah then this is gonna go parallel to this so let's see I don't want to do like that, something like that. I want to flatten this out just a little bit. I think I have it angled too much right here. So right in there somewhere. And then this would, like if you did a straight line across here, this would be where this one would come down. So just kind of keep that in mind. Somewhere in there, I think. And then I can kind of find the center mark, which would be right in here somewhere. And let's go ahead and do that one. And then there's another one on either side of it here. And here, it's really close to the edge. Something like that. I'm widening these out. I think this is actually a little bit more narrow in our photograph. So I might bring the chair over just a little bit. Um, my board is wider than it is tall in our photograph. So um, I might just do a little bit of an adjustment here. Bring this over to about right there. And the nice thing about the chalk is that it makes it really easy to just kind of make a small adjustments like that. So let's move it over a little bit right in here. I think that that'll be a little bit better for us. And then our flowers are all going to be right in here. So this is all our flowers, flowers, and then our mug is in here somewhere. Goes off this side there and ends up right there. All right, so let's go ahead and put the chair in first and then we'll put our mug in. Um, I think I've got that somewhat right. It looks weird. I feel like I'm off somewhere, but... You mean the painting? Well, that too. Okay. <laughs> we just want to be clear what we're talking about. <laughs> Let's get some burnt umber here. Somebody commented earlier that they like how you ignore me sometimes completely. <laughs> and I said, this is just regular life. This is, is how we live. This is exactly... Yeah. This is the fun thing about these shows for me is that Mark and I have these silly conversations all the time, like all the time for years. We've, you know, we just do these, I don't know, we get on these little tangents and we chat and I can never, ever remember what we talked about. I always remember that I laughed and it was funny, but I can never remember like what exactly we talked about. So now I have the record of it. I can just go back and, you know relive it if I want to. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> if you want if to. If I want to. <laughs> Key. Key words there. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> Noticing this background here was a little bit darker in this corner here, so I'm going to probably go back over the background just a little bit and glaze some dark on there. But you can see that I'm kind of following the wood grain of the chair now. So um, in this back corner, I can't even see. So I'm not going to even worry about that. I'm just going to bring that up here. All of this is covered with that cloth. So I just need a dark color underneath. There we go. And I mean, if you wanted to, you could, you could just um, leave this part and not do it. But you know, it's just easier. I find that just to do the whole thing, the whole background wood grain, and then not have to paint around it. I do it both ways though. Sometimes if it's if it's a drawing that I don't want to have to, this is a fairly simple drawing. She says, and then. You know, I should remember that chairs are kind of my nemesis. I don't know why I thought I could draw this live. You know, it's just super it's not easy. on the beach, so we should be okay. Oh, that's true. You can't see the legs, so that that's uh, a plus. That helps. <laughs> chair backs, you're great. Chair back, I can rock a chair back, no problem. <laughs> the chair factory, Angela designs all the backs. Uh huh. We're good. I, I made the mistake of, you know, these are live videos, so of course, you know, I don't don't practice them anymore. I used to practice them. I used to do like a practice piece ahead of time, but that meant I was doing like six videos a week and or six Painting. paintings a week, you know, and my arm was like, no, thank you. So after a bout of tendonitis that sent me to therapy, I had to cut back so now we just do them live and I hope for the best <laughs> well I've been painting for about 30 years so usually if I get into a mess I can fix it but uh, we were painting yeah. a chair uh, on yep. a beach with an umbrella mm -hmm. a couple of years ago probably three years ago now and I royally messed up the chair because I was like I'm going to simplify this thing and that was like famous last words was it? So it not too bad. Not like, it was not a functional chair. Out of like 400 some on videos, you got one that <laughs> got some wonky chairs, but that's okay. Uh, my record is all right. Yep. I'm trying to redeem myself with this chair series. <laughs> <laughs> I I want to prove that I can paint chairs without them being unstable. Well, yeah, but you're cheating by not doing the legs. Well, hey, it doesn't matter. It, it's <laughs> still a chair. You can tell it's a chair. There we go. So the chair, I'm just doing a little, it's actually very close to the colors of the background. So I'm, all I'm doing is just kind of changing the tone just slightly and the value just a little bit so that the value is just your dark and light. Um, so just making sure that you've got a little bit of value. If you're like, if you're painting this on and you can't see it, then change the color that, or change the darkness of your color, either lighter or darker, either way will work. You just kind of need to do that and you'll be fine. I'm going to get a little bit of dark and I'm just going to make a little shadow right on the inside with the edge of my brush. I'm just running it all the way down. There we go. Keep it kind of right on the edge there. That got a little thick right up there, but there we go. So that kind of gives us a little bit of like a shadow there. Let's go ahead and do it at the bottom of this one. Just getting some of this dark gray that we mixed up. And putting it, I'm putting it on while it's wet, and then that way it's kind of blending a little bit with this color, so it's not super a uh, super hard line because this this chair is actually kind of in in uh, like blurred out, you know, in the background, so um, it's not like a super hard line here. Okay, there we go. All right, it doesn't look bad. I think I got it all right. I think I think we'll be fine. My my chair my vase is going to cover most of this and then we're going to have the lace over that part so the only part of the chair that really is going to be visible is here and i want to make sure that i've got some dark here see how it's kind of a little bit lighter over here and then darker um 
right in here. That's so that I can have that lace come over and that'll look like it's got a shadow underneath it. All right, let's keep on going here. Did you eat some of this chocolate? What? Did you eat some of this chocolate and close it back up? Um, I might have. Why? Is that well, because is that <clears throat> not okay. Because if you did, then I will eat this. If you didn't, what I won't eat it. What flavor was it? Uh, blue, purple, blue. But it says on the package what, what flavor. Uh. Uh, praline cream. Yeah, I think I decided I didn't like it. <laughs> You're welcome to it. How old are you? Mm. <laughs> well, I don't want to waste good chocolate. No, yeah, I just, no, I agree. you know, I agree. close it back up. Well, you know, I somebody know that, else might want it. Yeah, Him, I know, Mark. I know somebody. You know, other people were eating it. I just want to make sure. <laughs> I mean, your cooties already have, so that's, that's fine. Right, you've got plenty of my cooties already. Does, I wonder if people from other countries know what cooties are. Like, I wonder if that's just an American thing or if it's kind of uh, translates to other languages, too. How would you explain that? All right, I'm just using my wet brush here to kind of clean off my chalk marks here so that I can see what I actually have down here. You can use a wet paper towel, too, either one, but this just kind of gets me... A little bit more precision. So cooties are like girl germs. <laughs> They're special germs that only girls have that boys no, don't want. Boys have them too. Yeah, but the girl ones are more yucky. Okay. Until you get older and then you discover they're not yucky. <laughs> <laughs> it was a lie your parents told you. <laughs> <laughs> It's about that's about right. I think that's a good explanation. <laughs> All right, I'm going to use a little bit of this pink and some of the unbleached titanium, grab a little bit of this brown. I'm just kind of mi mixing all these colors in together, and I'm just going to kind of use a little bit of it on this chair. It's probably too much there, but I'm going to kind of blend it out slightly, so it's fine if it's a little bit. I'm just going to go over it while it's still wet. And just kind of soften it up a little bit. And I'm going to do a little bit on here, too. There we go. And, and while that's wet, I'm going to go ahead and go over it slightly. I know I'm angling it. Hopefully you can still see what I'm doing. Angling it down there. You could use a paper towel, too, if you wanted to, to blend it in, or you can use your finger. I've used my finger, too, to kind of help smudge it around. I'm just kind of trying to soften up that, make it look like it's kind of chipped paint just slightly. I think that's good. Let's go ahead and add a little bit of this to this part up here. There we go. And then a little bit down here on this pad that's down here. And we might not have to darken up that background. I think if this just doing this, like highlighting along this edge is gonna be enough for a chair. Okay. And it'll dry a little bit darker, so now just make sure that your lines are lining up with this line and not with this line. So you don't want your chair lines to go this way. You want that wood grain to match up with the back end of that chair there. Uh, okay, let's switch to a different brush because we've got some like spindles here. So let's use, I'm gonna grab my, I don't have it out. I'm gonna grab my four short filbert, number four short filbert here. And same colors, so just getting that unbleached titanium and running it through with this burnt umber and 
um, ultramarine blue gray that I made. Um, so, and then picking up more ultramarine blue every now and then when I, or more burnt umber every now and then when I need it. I think I'm actually going to, I think I can do it with this brush. All right, so let's start fairly narrow and just kind of mark out our center line. That'll help us kind of, and we're putting the rest of this in. Okay, so there's our line. It should match up with that. And I'm gonna get a little bit of that purple too. And then I'm going to start on this side and just start these little dips in the wood. There's a long one here in the middle, and then two more short ones here, here, and then another one to... Now, if you want to, you can draw these out just to make sure that you've got them all evenly matched. And then I'm just going to kind of use the wet paint here to smudge that out. Okay, and then there is a shadow underneath each one of them. Like that, and then get my highlight color, use it on this side and just kind of match up the same shape, so. And pull it in towards the middle. And this is, I'm working fairly wet here so that I can kind of blend wet into wet as I go. If you wanted to, you could let your first layer dry completely and then come back to this. It's up to you however you want to do it. What you taking pictures of? Cootie definitions. <laughs> Is there a debate as to what a cootie is? Well, there's a wide range and... <clears throat> Sorry, there's a wide range and, and people, you know, in other countries have definitely not heard it. Oh, that's funny. <clears throat> so the actual meaning of a cootie is a body lice. Oh, nice. Okay. But it's hilarious because there's a U.S. definition. Okay. That is a children's term for an imaginary germ or repellent quality transmitted by an obnoxious people. <laughs> so yeah, girls have cooties. Exactly. That's awesome. Transmitted by obnoxious people. Yeah. I like that definition. So yeah, definitely boys <laughs> fit that definition. Most definitely. All right, so there we go. One down. Let's do it again. That worked out. So let's just go ahead and mark the center so that we have our mid, middle. Oops, wrong way. This way. That doesn't matter really. I'm painting over the whole thing. So it's about right. I definitely can tell that this probably should have been a little farther down, but. We're, we're doing an interpretation. We're not doing an, a literal, um, realistic one today, tonight. We, nobody got time for that on, on a Tuesday night. Mm -hmm. so. Especially with Oak Island. <laughs> 30 years from now, people are going to be watching this video going, what the heck oh, is Oak Island? Yeah. By that time, hopefully they would have solved the mystery. Down the treasure and but probably happy. not. Probably they're probably still digging holes. Mark and I differ on our excitement level with that show. I've pretty much lost interest in it. <laughs> Do I think they're going to find treasure? No. Okay. But it is very interesting the things that they have discovered this year. You just like watch them <clears throat> blow crap up. That's all. Well, they haven't blown anything up. That's true. They haven't. They've been using the backhoe for things. <laughs> so, 
you know, they find a precious artifact, it'll get. They're like, oh, here's a small piece of leather. Well, it used to be a big piece of leather to you blew it up and then. Right. We found a little piece of pottery shard in here. Drilled it out. <laughs> oh, I wonder how that got broken. <laughs> Don't know. So weird. Okay, so just doing the same thing there, just kind of, and this is very, well, definitely not matching, but okay. You know what? As I say, it is what it is. It's going to be an interesting chair. I might end up just doing straight lines if I, if I don't like this. So we'll see. And honestly, if you don't want to do this, you could totally do the straight lines and just do the dark side on one side. Obviously, our light's coming from this side, so the things on this side are all going to be darker. Underneath is darker, obviously. Um, and then the things on top. We did get a little... Let's go ahead and get this dark and do that dark um, line up under here. Like we did on here on this side. There we go. So we've got a dark line there, dark line here, dark line along this edge of the table, or table, um, chair. No. I know what I'm doing. Okay, there we go. Is there Something a conditioning season? In there. What? Yes, air conditioner season. Yes, we're going to have, yeah, we're going to have air conditioning noises, fan noises in the background now, starting. I'm too uh, menopausal to go without air in the studio. Well, there's a lot of lights in here. It gets really hot in the summer. <laughs> I did used to use my... Dyson fan, but it dried out my paint so bad I can't use it really. It's uh, not great on the paints. Probably what you could do is like make your lines across so that that match up with this. So you know, yeah. See the what I'm doing is making it even with this. See how I did, and it needs to be even like this. So I need to bring this either this one up or this one down. This one needs to come down to here. Yeah, that's what I'm, that's what you don't want to do because that's what's throwing it off. Ooh. So I'm trying to make them even this way and I'm, it's not correct because they need to be even. Each one of these little bumps need to be even this way along that axis. So bring this one down, bring this one down. I'm not, this brush is not doing it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get a different brush because this one's too big. I'm just kind of making a mess. Let me get the number two round here. It'll give me a little more control over what I'm doing since I'm having to fix this. So, move this one up. This one down, this one down. It's about the right spot. They started out at the right place, but then they kind of even out. And that's what happens because your your eye is trying to level them out that way. You know, you're not really looking at it at an angle. So it might hurt, help if you kind of turned it at an angle while you're painting these in, so that you keep that keep them all at even. I don't know, whatever works for you. So I'll bring that one down just a little bit more. And it's working for us that the background is the same color as this because it's really blending in pretty nicely. So we're not going to have to worry too much about trying to make them match. Or, you know, cover up 
anything. It's going to kind of blend in pretty well for us, I think. So I'll bring that one down a little bit. There we go. If it's not blending for you, that probably means it's trying to dry. So you might need to leave those areas alone while they dry. Or you may just have to add some more of your lighter color, you know, on for it to blend into it. Because this one. This one's all covered up just in, just about most of this middle part is at least, at least so all right I think that fixed it that was what was throwing it off for me so it was that that line not being lined up with the knobs now it looks better just shading underneath each one of those too because they kind of have a little bit of that shading there. Darkening it up where it goes down. And then getting the lighter color for this side. Okay, and then I'm gonna get just a little bit of white and just kind of very lightly kind of dry brush some highlights on that side. And this can also kind of help um, even things out. So if you've got, you know, an area that's looking a little weird, if you put this highlight up high or up or down lower, even if your spindle is not quite the right shape, you can, it'll kind of fix it a little bit. That makes sense. Yes. Okay, there we go. And let's go ahead and do it, but just a little bit of an indication on this edge here. So somebody would like to know why spend so much time on the background details if it's going to be covered up? Uh, well, it, w it will be shown. Some of it will show. So... If you don't have it right, then you're going to have weird, you know, stuff. You're going to kind of guess where, <coughs> right. where it's not going to show and then also to the continuity of... You could paint, you could draw it in really carefully and then, you know, and then just paint those areas. That's, you know, that's another way of doing it. But since I don't have the drawing in, you know, finished, then doing it this way is better because then I can just... Do my flowers just over the top, mm -hmm. and then I don't have to worry about it. Imagine. So at this point, if you just wanted a painting of a chair, you're done. Yeah, there you go. Mark's like, done. Then we'll do a chair with some lace, and then you can do a chair with some lace and flowers. <laughs> right, but true, so. I mean, it's a good technique. You can use it for about any other oh, subject absolutely. matter. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. All right, so let's go ahead and do the lace. So I'm going to just kind of very, I've added white. To this and I'm going to very lightly just kind of do a broken line let let it kind of show that dark through in places and then just kind of start creating little dabs and dots to create that lace so there um, there there and if you want to you can so like there's a Let's go ahead and do kind of a, a mock-up of where I'm seeing. This is actually going all the way to the edge there. I'm, so kind of like that. Let's go ahead and do it out a little bit more right here. And then the pattern that I'm seeing is this 
wagon wheel kind of spokes. And then the ones here are very, are flattened out, so they're very, um, they're not a circle circle, they're kind of flattened like that. And then there's some details there. I don't think I'm gonna bring it all the way to the edge. I'm just gonna do that. We'll do like that. So let's go ahead and map out the boundary of it. And this side is like little dots. So I'm just gonna load up fairly thick with this paint. And that way I can just kind of dab it on with my little dot, like the tip of my brush here. There we go. And this is just the white and the unbleached titanium here. So I see you <clears throat> put some secrets out there in the Taking Flight group. I did. Yeah, we've got some exciting stuff going on this year. It's been a wild couple of this. It's been a wild year, really. <laughs> have a lot of unusual things that have occupied my time, and uh, one is that we are now Angela Anderson Thankful Art Incorporated. <laughs> you need to say it in your deep voice. I think I'll make it more interesting. <laughs> Um. Yes, <clears throat> it is Angela Anderson, Thankful Art Incorporated. That's what I said. You said I had to say in my deep voice. Oh, okay. So I just did. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> did you forget already? No, I just thought you were like looking it up to I see think, if I was right. I think I moved to uh, remove the president. <laughs> <laughs> Mark's the vice president of our corporation now, which just cracks me up that it's like incorporated. But, you know, my tax person has been telling me to do it for a couple of years now. So <laughs> we finally, and then when we, when we went to talk to the guy that actually did it, because I couldn't figure out how to do it. So I went to a CPA to do it. And he's like, yeah, you should have done this a long time ago. <laughs> Okay. The other thing you posted out there was some uh, logo changes, too. I so. did. Yeah, we got a new logo to go with it and all that fun stuff. So, yeah, we have we kind of had the logo in, in the works, and then uh, it's almost done. So I'm really excited about it. I really like it, too. It's beautiful. So, yeah, if you're part of my Thankful Art group, I just posted that. I'll be That'll posting be. it on social media this week, probably, just as a teaser. To It's not finalized, so it's, it, may, it may change a little bit. But I see it in the take, Taking Flight group. Did you put it in both groups? No, I didn't. I just did it in the Art Taking Flight okay, group. Okay, so correction, it's in the Art Taking Flight group. Mm -hmm. Okay. Did I say Thankful Art? Yes. I'm sorry. <clears throat> well, that's okay. Okay, so most of this now is going to be... I'm just going to go ahead and do just some random dots back here because most all this is vase, but there is a little bit of this showing. And I'm just kind of clustering, honestly not being super careful with this, but it's amazing your eye kind of, how your eye kind of connects the dots, you know, stuff like this. So just doing these little sections and then where these circles touch up um, doing these kind of connecting little parts that kind of they reach out to each other and you know touch so they're holding hands here these different sections in between these circles that makes sense And keeping the brush strokes just kind of all similar sizes. So they kind of look like they go together. And some of that lace is 
almost solid so some of these in the circles I'm gonna kind of dab a little bit closer together and again I'm not being super careful with this we're doing it quickly and just kind of getting the feel for it that's it we're just going with the overall impression that it gives that's where impressionistic art kind of got its name I think you know you're not doing all the little details exactly photorealistic you're just kind of painting it in to give the idea of whatever it is you're trying to do not sure if that made sense at all but it did okay good. but you know i've had 30 some odd years of practice so yeah you, you understand angela speak yes pretty well by now after 30 something years We're at that stage, 30-something years. I know. I I got it wrong the other day. Mark knows better than me what how long we've been married. Well, because math is my thing. That's true. That and That's a good excuse. We're about eight finger widths. <laughs> married. <laughs> in, in, in Angela speak. Yes. Now this one is the, you know, in the front, so I'm going to be a little bit more deliberate about this one and give it a little bit more detail. And if I want to do that kind of change stitch, just kind of do your line and just wiggle it <coughs> as you go around. Sorry. Honestly, there's not a lot of this detail on any of these other ones. They're all kind of, um, they're laying so flat that you're just not seeing this detail. So it's fine that this one's the only one that we're seeing because it's kind of facing us a little bit more. This is actually the chair edge right here. more to it later but I think that'll do for now so let's go ahead and I'm gonna wipe this whole background off this is dry now so I can see what I've got this really is helpful just don't do it while it's wet okay take that off. there we go all right uh, while I'm thinking about it I'm gonna take this shadow color and get some of my glaze that really dark shadow color maybe even add a little bit of purple to it and I'm going to use it right here go in between here and add a shadow underneath this and you might do this in sections if you can't get this all done in one go here wiping that off while that's still wet I'm just going to use that kind of wet ish damp brush to pull it out you could use your finger you could use a paper towel whatever works for you just quickly pull that wet edge out just a little bit so that gives that now it's dimensional a little bit let's go ahead and do it on this side too let's see a little bit of the shadow back here too now you may have said it when i wasn't paying attention which could be at any point <laughs> but, all the time yeah uh, you did mention that you had a a challenge video where you did a very detailed lace with yes, the still life. Yes, just did it. I, I didn't just talk about it. Okay. Um, um, yes, we did the the lace curtains um, a couple months ago. We did that one. I was also thinking the one with the uh, water pitcher. And oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah the uh, the green the green goblet yeah, one. Yeah. yeah. That's yes. We very, did a very, very detailed, detailed lace on that. Yeah, that was really pretty. I decided I brought that 
down too far, so I'm just kind of fixing it and putting, bringing my chair back over this area right here. There we go. All right, most of this is going to be covered up, but just that little bit might show, so I just wanted to cover that up. All right, so let's leave that, and let's go ahead and sketch in our mug. So the mug's going to set right in here, and... It's going to cover this corner, so I want to make sure that I'm centering it uh, just off of this right here. So it should span this area right here, here, and here. So it's going to come down, widen right here. And then the foot of it is going to be right in here. And it's going to be curved. And then it comes in and then curves back out. I, you can't really see it very well with this chalk, but. And then the handle is gonna come out somewhere in here. Okay. Big flower here, big flower here, big one right here, going all the way up almost to the top. Another big one here, and then another one that's facing out that way. This one's a little lower than that one. This one's a little bit, a little bit higher, and this one's kind of smushed in the middle. This is the centers of them, so mark out kind of where they're facing. That'll be helpful when we start working on them. All right, so that's all we're gonna do there. Let me go back to this short filbert here, and I'm gonna get this purple and some of that gray. I'm gonna fill in this with that color. And we'll probably just let this um, set a minute before we can do much to it. And I really want to exaggerate that line. Probably could have come in just a little bit more. And this is all going to be covered up by the flowers here. Okay, so wherever this comes down here, it should match up right here. Make sure that you've got it. Even. And then let's do the little foot. So the foot's going to come out at an angle and it's going to match up this curve here. and round out a little bit on either side. So it's not like a straight line right here. It's just slightly curved. Oh my gosh. Come on, there we go. I'm just making sure that if I split this in the middle, that I've got the same amount of foot and the same amount of body of the pitcher on either side. It looks like it's we're pretty good to go. Pretty close. I might bring this out just a little bit right here. You can see how it's not covering, it's not wanting to cover that white area here, so I'm just going to go a little bit darker. Give it a second coat right there. And again, if you don't want to paint the stuff behind it, you can paint around it. It's totally fine. It just saves me time doing it this way tonight because it's always easier to kind of paint things without having to go around stuff. There's our handle. Probably could have come out a little bit farther, but that's all right. I'm gonna get my white, and while that's still wet, I'm gonna come around there, give that a little highlight, and then I'm gonna get some of this unbleached titanium. I have not cleaned out my brush, so it's being influenced by the colors that are already here. And anytime you're doing metals or glass um, or something like that. It's going to pick up the colors around it, um, anything reflective like that. So it's going to have these colors of flowers in here and different things. So I'm going to kind of set my set brush to the side here and I'm going to start dabbing and leaving some of that dark showing. 
while I dab. And I really need a little bit more of that gray, so I'm gonna mix up a little bit more of that gray. If you wanted to, you could have a black here and do some black uh, to add to your white. Um, it's up to you. Because you're gonna have the chair color, you're gonna have you know all these different colors that are around it. So this is just that gray from the chair here and I'm going to use that a little bit on that side. The, this area right in here is going to be our lightest area. And I'm going to start introducing a little bit of yellow now. I haven't introduced this yet, but this will be kind of a new color. And we'll, it'll be in our flowers. So, And we could add it to our lace too. We probably, I probably will actually. Um, let's go ahead and add it in a couple places in our lace here. And we'll be glazing over the lace to add shadows and things to the to it as well. So um, that's good. Let's go ahead and do it. I mean, normally I would kind of just wait for this to dry, but it's actually, if you don't wait, it it actually kind of blends a little bit. Um, get a little bit of white here, and I'm just very lightly going through here and making marks. And kind of just looking at the texture of the mug um, and trying to kind of mimic that with um, leaving plenty of this dark um, open space here. Okay, do you want to get down here? I probably didn't need this yellow oxide or the yellow oxide after all, but I'm going to get some of the yellow oxide, use it at the bottom so it's picking up colors from the chair and that lace. And it's not fully like, I would say like it's not reflecting an image. So it's not reflective that way. It's, it's reflecting the colors because it's a, um, that silvery finish on it <clears throat> is gonna act almost like a mirror. All right, so over here, I'm gonna get some more of that gray, darker color, and I'm gonna use it over here. Just gonna dab. How are we doing on time? Oh, good, we're an hour. We're gonna do, we're killing it on time today. I do like painting this way. I don't, I tend to get kind of caught up in details and um, I don't paint loosely like this very often anymore. I used to paint more loosely. Um, for teaching purposes, you know. Um, but now that we're doing Patreon and stuff, I have been uh, doing more of the detailed paintings and those have kind of spilled over into what I'm doing on YouTube somewhat. And so my YouTube stuff is also kind of turned out to be <laughs> a little bit more detailed just because I'm doing it so much that way, I think. <laughs> I don't know if that's why, but it just seems like... And some weeks I feel like I can't not, <laughs> I can't pull back. All right, I'm going to get some of the purple. I got made some more of that gray. I really need to just make a whole lot more of that gray, but I'm going to come back in here and see how I left some of that background color. So I'm just adding back in some of the background color in between here and places. Especially up in here, I want it really dark right here really dark right up in here. Any of this area where the flowers are overlapping it needs to be dark. And then there's like this highlight starting here. I'm going to get a little bit of that magenta even. Use it with that burnt umber and a little bit of that yellow. And this, this mug has just about every color that we've used in the whole painting, or that we will use in the whole painting. So we use this, the magenta in the background here with that purple that we made. Um, yeah, I like it. And then I'm seeing some of it back here. Okay, so let's just let that let that dry a bit. I'm going to get a little bit of the blue and just make a like a like a blue 
off off blue. That's is that a word? Mm -hmm. um, sure. I'm gonna use that in my highlight. This is art. It's a term. It's a term. Kind of a bluish, light blue. And this one over here has got the brighter, more yellow tones. So our shadow side, we'll use the bluer, more mauve, cool colors. And then over here, we'll use the yellows to where the light is hitting it. All right, getting the, using the blue on this. Mm, there's a little bit of that blue back there. And then it's all on this footer here. Leave a little bit of dark where it comes down, where that curve is. What are you taking pictures of? I'll give you three guesses. It's pickle. No. Me? You painting, yeah? Mm -hmm. I didn't do my hair. Well, I'm not you specifically. Okay. I'm paint, taking pictures of what oh, you're you painting. Oh, okay. <laughs> you take pictures of me without taking pictures of me specifically, is what I wonder. <laughs> like your hands. Ah. Uh, paintbrush. Interesting. I like it. All right, I'm gonna have to let that set because there's too many layers on it now to do anything else. So we'll let that dry and let's go ahead and glaze a little bit on our on our board here. I'm gonna get a little bit of that burnt umber, a little bit of the yellow oxide. Yellow oxide's opaque. The burnt umber's slightly slightly transparent, so. Just use a little bit of it, of the yellow oxide, and see if we can go over this whole thing here. Add just a little bit of a antiquing, basically. And I don't like the straight line that we've got over here, so I'm going to go ahead and grab a little bit of that unbleached titanium and... integrate that edge there a little bit better. So I'll remind you. Mm -hmm. I was able to take a picture because I had my phone. Right? Yes. So we are... Mark and I both had some had some senior moments this week. Mark's came earlier than mine, but he um, lost his phone, and we'd been outside, and we were going out in the car to go grab some dirt and stuff from Lowe's, the local hardware place, and um, couldn't find his phone. We looked and looked and looked, couldn't find it. So we're like, well, we'll just go and come back. And um, he came back and we started looking again. And We're looking all over the place. I mean, looking. I'm retracing my steps. He's trying, yeah, he's trying to figure out where he'd been in the house. We looked in the trash. Looked in the trash. Yeah, I yeah. looked out in the garage in the, in the refrigerator out there. and But I should have looked in the house refrigerator, turns out. Turns out his phone was hot from sitting outside when we were working out in the yard. So, logically, you'd put it in the refrigerator to cool it down. Yep. And then completely forget that you did that. Yep. <laughs> like three minutes earlier. 
I think it's just because it was so out of the norm mm. that you just, like, why would you even think that you would do that? Why would anybody do mm. that? But, yeah. Yeah. But the good thing is, is that it wasn't in the trash and somebody would have eventually found it. <clears throat> right. The next um, person that, yeah. I'm just glad it was me that found it. <laughs> You could have just not told on yourself. You could have just been like, oh, I found it in my pants. Right. right. <laughs> What's I, the fun in that? I could have, but. Because <laughs> you knew as soon as you told me that I was going to tell on you. And well, because I, well, I had already said I looked in my pants a couple of times, and so that wasn't a viable thing. So. <laughs> anyway, so Angela's was last night. Yeah. She's, so with the joys of, becoming a a corporation Mm -hmm. you have lots of paperwork to do and refile and so forth and so she was filing some paperwork and then realized that she had done some of it incorrectly and she said some nice choice words but (sighs) about myself not yeah and then fitz pickle came over and comforted me comforted me so she was was like okay i'll put away my computer and we'll just watch some tv and so she's sitting there still in the the fog of of what just happened with the paperwork and she realizes she's trying to control the TV with the computer mouse. <laughs> <laughs> like clicking and moving it around. I'm like, where's the, why is it not working? Why is it not working on the TV? Yeah. Okay. So yeah, that was mine. Yeah. All right. Just adding glaze to this mug now, add a little bit more blue down here. I added a dark shadow at the bottom to make that stand out a little bit. And I'm going to go ahead and add this white along this side just to highlight this back up. I noticed that I filled in like the entire area here with that lace and didn't leave any room for my background showing through. So I'm going to... Now just do a second layer of this lace, and this is where you really, um, this will be the final layer. You don't have to do anything else after this. You shouldn't have to. Once you glaze, that's that's kind of the main um, thing, just to give it some depth, you know, because you don't, once you just do that one layer, it's it's a lot of times it's it looks a little bit flat. So once you glaze it and then do another highlight on top of it, that's what'll give it a little bit more realistic look. And this is, I'm not going to do much more because I, I need to stop messing with it because I said I was going to keep it simple. Mm-hmm. That's what you said. Mm-hmm. I've witnessed it. Okay, there we go. So there's our lace. There's our chair. There's our mug sort of done. I'm not 100% happy with the colors, but we'll get back to them. So let's go ahead and I'm going to get a little bit more of this magenta here. And grab my mixed up pink. And make some of that. Okay, and then I'm going to... Get my yellow. And I'm gonna mix a little bit of that blue into it. So a little bit of that ultramarine blue to make it kind of a green. And if you don't have enough, just... So I've got the um, cadmium yellow light here. I picked the light version because it makes more of a lime green and that's what I'm seeing. It's kind of a brighter lime-ish green. So I'm going to add that in here into the centers of the flower. Flowers. And just using the edge of my brush there to kind of paint that in. Let's grab some of that purple. And some of them have that really dark in the middle of this. So go ahead and put some of that in there. So it's that dark purple. Probably should put the purple first, but that's all right. Uh, I'm trying to think if I want. I think I'm gonna. S- 
I think I'm gonna switch brushes. I think I want a little bit thinner brush for this. So I'm gonna get the two Filbert. And I'm gonna get this. And I think I want to make kind of an orange for some of the undertones. Not too orange, but just add a little bit of the yellow to that to give a little bit of that a warmer undertone to some of this in here. I'm just gonna kind of go along where I'm gonna put my petals and transition. And I'm not, you can see, I'm not being very careful with this. I'm not being too precious with my brush strokes. Just laying the color in there. I'm gonna get the darker pink and put it in between them. But just using that and make sure if you if you have your paint a little bit watered down that it'll help it'll move around a little bit easier for you so and I'm fine with the background showing through at this point it's not gonna make a difference we're just toning the canvas in the areas underneath our flower is all we're doing kind of just giving it a little bit of a uh, tone so that we can work against something so it's not just but like even that. your undertones your brush strokes are in the direction that your petals will eventually yes. be yes okay. i am keeping them keeping in that in mind as i do this so i'm getting more of that green and i'm going to start now kind of laying those in over the top of that a little bit starting that feel and you could do this kind of flower in any color that you wanted really um, but just like pick a couple colors so here we've got the yellow we've got the blue and we've got the magenta and white right and so I'm gonna mix all of my flower colors with that, those three colors pretty much um, so when you're picking you know another color of flower just pick a you know um, pick a color that will mix well with it um, blue is actually usually pretty pretty good for shadows you can uh, you can use um, I'm trying to think of like if you were doing a yellow flower say you could use like a burnt umber or something for your darker areas which is kind of close to orange right um, and then use like a green for your highlights or something um, or just white If you're doing purple, you could use blue for sure. You could use pink on the other side. So blue, pink, purple, kind of in that analogous colors where they're all kind of close together on the color wheel. Um, any of that. So I don't know if that made sense, but. All right, let's get, I'm gonna get this magenta here and I'm going to go fairly dark with this, so. Just mixing it up here and I'm gonna start kind of already started over here in this dark area I'm gonna start and I, I really need to make this area back here darker so I'm gonna get the burnt umber and some of that quinacridone magenta and some of this purple and I didn't use it until now because I didn't want to overpower this but I do need it like a dark really dark purple right back in there, or not purple necessarily, but really dark color right in there. Okay, that's good. So that'll be a good kind of neutral that we can pull into. And whoops. I am liking this brush for the brush strokes that it's doing. It's gonna, the ranunculus that we're doing here, they have these little teeny tiny petals that are all um, stacked, you know one on top of another so you kind of need to have a brush that'll be able to do these lines so even a round brush would work so I'm going a little bit darker than I than I think I need because I think that this is especially in the some of these in-betweens it's once we get our light colors in here we may I think we'll want to have a little bit of contrast here so just going to do that first because the light colors are going to be kind of our finishing touches. 
And there's only a little bit of that darker on that one. Okay. And then this petal down here is actually kind of a, I'm going to get some of this green here and mix it with my dark color and use it for that. So that's kind of our maybe shadow color for our petals that are sticking out there. Might add a little bit more white to it. There's only a couple of these petals that are really kind of like vis visibly separated from the other petals. The rest of them are all kind of stacked so close together. You're not really seeing the individual petals much. But I'm going to go ahead and do this area dark right where it comes into the flower. And then let's go ahead and use the white. And I haven't cleaned out my brush, so this has got some of that kind of more neutral color in it. I'm going to stack these petals up through there and start pulling them down just a little bit. So this one that's back in here, leave just a little bit of that showing. I'm going to get a little bit of this darker color and do it again over the top of this. And that's it. That's all I'm doing. I'm not going to overdo it. Because if I keep messing with it, it's going to kind of lose that look that I'm going for. Mm -hmm. So let's go ahead and move over to this one. I'm going to get more of that pink, but I'm using, again, that more neutral pink for this one. There's kind of a petal here. And get some white. I might use a little bit of this green, too. Just, there we go. This petal is facing away from us. These two are kind of facing away from us, so we're seeing the side. They they really do kind of just, it's like a bowl. The top is almost completely flat. And then the inside has got this swirly stuff going on. So we're just doing like a little indication of the side here. A little bit of that darker color right there and that's it okay now for the fun part this is so fun okay I'm gonna let's clean that out so I've got fresh paint on here I'm gonna get some white I'm gonna scoop it up move it over here press my brush flat Get some of my pink that we mixed up originally. Press my brush flat. Press my brush flat is important because that will give me a more solid line, thinner lines. So I'm just going to start in the center and start doing these kind of almost a box around the center. It's really what you're seeing, kind of a little box. I'm going to get a little bit of that yellow and go in there like that. And then get my pink again. And I'm going to bring my pink, my darker pink in a little bit more than this. One more layer of that darker, kind of mid-tone, dark pink. So do we know what kind of flowers these are? These are ranunculus. Ranunculus. Yes. Ridiculous, ridiculous. I was going to say, there we are, I'm so glad that, but you took my 
dad joke, so thanks. <laughs> <laughs> these are one of my favorite flowers. But these poppies, peonies, they're all kind of pretty close up in there. Let me see I what like I these. ordered. Hold on. Let me make sure uh, I didn't get those. Uh, for Mother's Day. Oh, speaking of Mother's Day. Okay, so I'm starting the, the light pink now. So just kind of pressing that brush flat so I've got a good thin line on it. See how that is thin? And I'm going to use the edge of it to just do these little tiny brush strokes that are all just stacked up one on top of another almost. Just a little bit of a space in between them like that. Okay, um, We're going to be doing a huge... We've never done this many paintings on Etsy before. I've got dozens and dozens. I've got a whole stack. Literally, oh, 16 times 16, but times 16 times 16 times 16. How many is that? Or not times, but plus. So how many 16s was that? Five, Five. six, maybe six. 80 to 100, 90, 90, 90, yeah, something like that. Paintings from the past you know, several years, um, we're going to be doing a big Mother's Day what? sale. I've cleaned out my closet and oh, I need to make room. We're adding too many paintings <laughs> <laughs> every month. <laughs> we, we paint a new, another, you know, eight to 12 a month. And uh, I just, my storage thing that we literally just bought is already full. So I'm like, I need to I need to, Move I've been out. holding on to some of these, some of my, so some of them are like some of my favorites, some, some of the large flowers and some of the different ones. So if you're interested in that, we're going to be sending out a newsletter with a special discount code for Mother's Day um, this week. So, um, and I think tomorrow we're going to send out a preview of the paintings that we're going to have it in and it's going to start on Friday. So. That's the plan. So if you want to join the Thankful Art or go to the Thankful Art website, you can join our newsletter there and get the discount code for the Etsy sale. Uh, real quick, the brush is an Aspen 2? Yes. Filbert that you use right now? Okay. Mm -hmm. That's what I thought. It's not the short Filbert. The short Filbert is only in the number four. That's the only one that they make in the short Filbert. So this is the regular one that's a lot longer. Okay, so here we go. Just keep it on going around. And I'm just every now and then varying it up and using a little bit more white or a little bit, less, you know, whatever. Just kind of trying to keep it sort of random. I'm going to bring this one out a little bit more than I have it here. Noticing it's a little bit bigger. And then on this side, I'm going to press down just a little bit more because these brush, these petals are a little bit bigger. We're seeing them like from the side a little bit, so they're a little bit bigger. Like that. Okay, let's go ahead and leave that one. We'll just work on this one over here. And if you can't see the separation here, then just add a little white or, you know, it's all about the value. So if you if you can't see the separation, you want to see, you know, where one starts and the other one ends, just add a little bit uh, of a contrast. So either darken it up or lighten it up, either one. But since our light source is coming from here, um, keep that in mind when you're doing it, you know. inside bowl of my flower on this side is going to be a little bit darker because it's getting shadowed so these in here are going to be a little bit darker and then as you go up to the top it's going to be lighter where they're hitting the light or the light's hitting them I should say get some of that green and use some of that greenish color there and getting 
some white. Okay, I'm gonna call that good. And honestly, these are probably a little bit brighter pink than what the flowers and the pictures are, so we could add a lot more white to these, I think. We'll start out here and we can always go brighter. Let's maybe make this one a little bit brighter though. I don't think that's what God said about me. <laughs> when they were giving out brains? Yeah, he didn't say, oh, let's make this one a little bit brighter. <laughs> So this week, yes. you're doing your challenge video. Right. Finishing that up. Finishing up the seaside scape thing. Yep. Blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. yep. And we're going to not be doing Saturday shows. Right. We're starting. For at least a couple months, it may extend longer. There's, a, there's other projects that are being worked on. Yes. We which a really fun project that we've got coming up this summer. So in, we'll in be time we'll be able to announce. Yeah. yeah. It's just a secret between the president and vice president <laughs> of Thankful Art Incorporated. So <laughs> I'm kind of a pretty big deal. <laughs> <laughs> I know secrets. <laughs> I was thinking I could be the chief incredible audio officer. We should have put that on there. Or Chow for short. <laughs> <laughs> These are the things I think about while I'm driving for hours. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't think that made Chow, though. I don't think that that's... C-I-A-O? Is that how you spell Chow? You missed an I in there, Chow. Oh, Chi. It's I think Chow is C H C I A L, right? I'm not sure. Maybe I'm spelling it wrong. Yeah. Okay. Chow. Okay. I can't believe I got that right. You didn't. I know. Man. That never happens. Who's the brains around here now? Huh? <laughs> Have you been reading? <laughs> Please. <laughs> I didn't even know that the names of the chocolates were on the wrappers. That's how much I don't read. <laughs> I was looking at the colors on the box. <laughs> oh, gosh. Yeah, what were we doing the other day? And you, were, I was like, "What did you, you could have just read that?" I can't remember, but oh well. This is a long, a, a long-standing argument, or not argument, just observation. Facts. Facts. All right, we're nearing the end here, and this is one of the things where you really don't want to overdo it. So, stop every now and then and take a step back. And look at it from a distance. And then, you know, if you decide you need to keep going, then do it then. But And I definitely think that, again, I, I went a little too bright pink. So I'm going to mauve it up here with a little bit of yellow. Or I should say, kind of make it more salmon-y. It's one of my favorite word, made up words, salmon -y. Hey, Golden, if you're looking for new paint colors, we'll, we'll hook you up. Salmony is right up there. That and Dirty Shadow Blue. Mm -hmm. Okay, mixing the yellow into my light pink here. I've got a lot of this color, so I might as well use it, right? Okay, there we go. So I'm going to use some of that.
get in the white. And if any at any point that you like it and you're just happy with it, just stop. You know, you don't have to do as many layers or whatever as I've done here. And I'm only adding this color back in because I I think it needed a little bit more of that salmon tone. So I'm gonna use this with a darker tone and just add some pick pop it in in between here and there. Especially in our my dark areas it'll kind of help and you know you may have lost some of that too so it's good so pretty love painted flowers it's so fun it's relaxing don't stress over this. It doesn't have to be the same exact colors as mine. Use, use your own imagination. I know. I, it's funny. I have a Facebook group, and sometimes, like, I go in there, and then they're talking about me, <laughs> and I feel like, kind of a like, am I supposed to comment? Because. <laughs> They're like saying how I don't always say my colors that I'm mixing, and I'm like, yeah, guilty. But I mix, I mix the color, and then I mix into that color. So that's where it, because I don't remember what color it is anymore after a while. So it's better just to take notes. That's what I've told people. Take notes, you'll you'll have an easier time. But one of the ladies was like, just suggested. She was like, uh, just. Uh, just mix your own. Don't worry about it matching Angela exactly because otherwise you'll drive yourself crazy. And I'm like, yeah, that's very good advice, I'm sure. Because it, you know, it's going to be different. You're going to, you know, use different different amounts of paint. And, yeah, you know, getting it exactly the same colors as mine is almost probably impossible. So just kind of get it as close as you can, you know, if you want it to match. And and if it doesn't... We won't take off too many points when we're judging. I would just say, you know, just make it your own. I mean, we got a lot of paintings to judge. We kind of follow behind. <coughs> so. <laughs> yeah, get on that. Um. Yeah. <laughs> These ones are kind of solid petals down here, so I'm just going to connect in those up a little bit. All right, now I'm just going in with the white and just adding little bits of the white. And what are you laughing at? The rumbly Neighbor. outside. Yeah. Welcome to our neighborhood. It's noisy. A lot of noisy cars. Honestly, you could just take your brush and just go in a circle here and it would be fine too. I've seen people do ridiculous that way and they were really pretty, so. It's up to you. It's your painting. All right, I think I'm going to stop there. So let's um, do a little bit more on the vase, and then we'll be done. So while this is drying, I'm going to get some glaze here. I'm going to use that um, down here. I'm going to use the same colors as right up in here, just on the vase right there. Use a little bit down here. And then get some of this color. Just whatever you got mixed up here. And we just use the same colors down here. 
And this time I'm going to go a little bit brighter and try to kind of make that connected look. So I'm just kind of dragging my brush through to make that hammered metal look on this. There's a little bit brighter highlights right there, shine right there. Make sure this has a good shine. This whole area is pretty bright. Oh yeah, I was going to use my zinc white for this part too. Well, this might be too late. I've already kind of started it, but I'm going to go ahead and I'll use it down here. The zinc white is a um, is, is the transparent white so it kind of just gives a like a a fog over it gives it that kind of silvery feel I think so we can use it to kind of fog up some of the areas down here now I want a little bit of this orange that we used down here. So about how difficult are we putting this one in? It's not, I don't think it's very hard. I really don't. So I would. Keeping it loose and brushing the stick. Yeah, I think so. I think that's the key. Yeah. I think the, you know, the more detail that you put in or the, you know, the more realism you do, sometimes it bumps it up. But this one really doesn't have a lot of a lot of uh, things that would cause issues. And like I said, I mean, you could leave the lace out. Maybe the lace might be tricky. So you could leave that part out and just leave it a chair. Um, you could do, you could simplify the vase. You could do, you know, different kind of chair so that it's like straight instead of, there's a lot of things that you can do to make it simpler, you know, too, if you're a really new newbie beginner and don't feel comfortable you know, tackling something like this, but. And then another question somebody asked. Surprise, what you can do. I'm sorry. No, that's all right. Um, Burnt umber here. They, uh, in it. they asked if they could use a silver paint. Yeah, you could use silver. I wouldn't do it until the very end, though. Do all this stuff and then add your silver in just like little bits, because if you just what metallics flatten the color, they. Um, pull all the values out of it, you know, so you, it looks, there's no bump for more um, depth. So I would just, I, when I use metallics in a painting like this, I don't, I don't uh, put them all over the whole, the whole thing. So I wouldn't like cover the whole thing. I would just like put little dabs of silver in your brightest areas to catch the light and leave your dark areas dark. And that, that's the key. Um, for metallics, I think. Otherwise, they'll just, it'll just be a big gray mass or a big, you know, shiny mass. Adding some more of that purple through. So, yeah, I mean, I, again, as little or as much detail here as you want. I'm just kind of fussing with it at this point, but I'm having fun. So, what time is it? Oh, it's about time to stop. Mm -hmm. It's about time to stop. Um, one thing I did notice is I want to add just a little bit more of that shadow color to our chair just because now that it's dried and everything and we've got this vase and everything I feel like they, these need to be a little bit darker so I'm just going to go back in with my glaze with that darker purple and put it on this one side and just kind of dab it on here not even really blending it in much natural look I'm gonna get a little bit more of that purple and just make sure my purple center is dark right there mm, 
going to get a little bit of blue with my white. Add a little bit of the shine that's up in here with that. Yeah, and I think that back in here we could probably have a little bit of this darker glaze too. A little bit of the black or the burnt umber and purple here. Let me darken up this back area. I talked about it, but then I didn't end up doing it. Try not to get it on my chair there. I'm just going to pull it off of that with my wet brush. adding a shadow a little bit to that wall there getting a little bit more contrast I wasn't sure it was gonna need it but I think it does you don't even really have to go all the way up with it but there we go you can see it, it might be a little too bright I'll take a little bit of that off Just a slight darkening. All right, there we, we're done. Let me sign it. Super chat. What? The bell only has a ding on one side. Uh -oh. <laughs> only because I'm not doing it right. <clears throat> and I'll put it down. Okay. And turn all this off. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> okay, we had a couple super chats tonight. <clears throat> the first one was from Paula. She says, thank you, Angela and Mark. You have taught me so much. I appreciate both of you. Aww, oh, you, you both. Thank you, Paula. And then we had one from Patty, and Patty says, beautiful painting, Angela. Thank you. Aww, you're welcome, Patty. Yes, thank, thank you, you so much. And I think you talked about it as I was out drawing. We have patreon.com slash Angela Fine Art. I did, yes. I will have I I haven't done the traceable for this yet, but I will do it here right after the show. So very good. Ready here in a little bit. And uh yeah, that was fun. I liked it. Yeah, you did pretty good there. Thanks. It's definitely uh a rough interpretation. No, I like I it. I, I like that look. Okay, I do. Good. That All that's right. that's getting you towards where you want to be. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, in some things. Sometimes oh, yeah, I like yeah. to do the realism, but oh, yeah. with stuff like this I like to keep it a little more simple. So All right guys, thanks so much for hanging out with us. We really appreciate you and uh, we will be back next Tuesday. We're gonna take if you're part of our Patreon crew, we're going to be finishing up this one. I'll show you what we've got left to do here. Probably got at least two hours <laughs> on this, maybe three on Thursday. Uh, we're going to add some rock here and finish up these buildings and things. So we've got most of this done over here. That built boat has got a lot of detail, a lot of fun stuff going on in this painting. Um, so this is our $10 level on Patreon that we've uh, been working on all all month long on Thursdays. I'm, I don't know where my bonus video is over there. But uh, we already finished our $5 level video. So, um, but I did mention that, yeah, the, they, it starts on the, yeah. on the <clears throat> May 1st would, I would probably wait till May 1st if, if you haven't signed up 
already. So right. just because it'll charge you the day you sign up and then it'll charge you again on May 1st because that's how it, it works on the calendar. Um, right. And you get access to all the past videos. So you're right. not going to miss it. You'll be able to go exactly. back and watch them all. Right. Right. For the past four years, literally. Yes. Literally. Yes. We've got literally like dozens of, I don't know how many I should count them up sometimes. Hours. Hours, hours and, and hours, hours and hours, and hours yes. of painting. Yes. Yes, because those videos are the ones that I don't do on YouTube because they're so detailed. Right. <laughs> they're, I'm, I'm adding just another like little highlight like right along that edge because it, it's a little bit more highlighted right there. But yeah, those are um, those are the ones that, you know, are just too time consuming to do on YouTube because... But the nice thing about the patrons is they make it possible for us to do these free videos. So that's nice. You know, that we appreciate all of them who support us. Um, and whenever you buy art materials from our links that are down in the description, all of that helps our channel and helps us keep our videos free. And um, we really enjoy doing these free videos. So I'm glad that uh, we appreciate you guys that um, do support our channel on Patreon and through the links and things like that because it really, um, it's kind of, I call it, you know, paying it forward. You're kind of passing on the, passing on the love and allowing others that can't afford it maybe to uh, enjoy these free videos. So. Right, enjoy the, the, discover the enjoyment of painting. Exactly, exactly. All right, guys, have a great rest of your week, and we will see you next Tuesday. Thanks for watching. Bye.